Okay, so let's try to predict this uh, electrolysis product of a molten salt mixture. Okay, so that molten helps us out to remember that it's in the liquid state. So we have a naturally occurring mixture of sodium bromide and magnesium chloride. So let's go ahead and write that down. Okay, and it decomposes into an electrolytic cell. Um, predict the substance formed at e each electrode and write the balanced half reactions and the overall cell reaction. Okay, so the possible oxidizing species, let's write that up there. Okay, so. are going to be sodium plus and magnesium. Okay, so the two cations. So, um, the possible reducing species are going to be the two anions. Okay, so in this case, Cl minus, Br minus. So how do we know which one gets um, reduced? How do we know which one gets oxidized? Well, we have to um, remember our periodic trends about first ionization energy and electronegativity, okay? So if we remember our trend about first ionization energy, what we should know is that magnesium has a higher first ionization energy than sodium does, okay? So since that's the case, it means it's harder to remove an electron from magnesium than it is for sodium, okay? So it, since that's the case, it should follow that magnesium would be easier to donate an electron to than sodium, okay? So. Since that's the case, the thing that gets reduced is the magnesium ion, okay? So we're going to write a half reaction with that magnesium ion there, okay? So we've got this, now remember, this is in a molten salt mixture, okay? So this is to remind myself. So Mg2 plus liquid, okay? This is getting reduced by two electrons, and it's going to magnesium metal in the liquid form. Is everybody okay with the logic process there? Okay, wonderful. So now let's look at the possible reducing species. In this case, we have to look at the electronegativity. Chlorine is more electronegative than bromine. So that means that chlorine must be holding on to its electrons more tightly than bromine does, okay? Since that's the case, that means that the backwards logic means that bromine must be able to give up an electron easier than chlorine can. Is everybody okay with that logic process? So since that's the case, we would assume or think that, or no, we don't assume anything in chemistry, right? That bromine must be the one giving up its electrons or oxidizing the magnesium. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. So in this case, it's gonna be Br minus liquid again. Why? Because it's in the molten state. That goes to, well, Br2, and that's going to be a gas, okay, it's going to come off as a gas. But notice, we've got two Brs there, so we have to have two Brs over here. And with two minuses, that means we've got two electrons there, okay? So, this electrons are equivalent here. So we 
can cancel them out and write the overall reaction that we're going to be having in this um, electrolytic cell. So Mg2 plus liquid plus 2 Pr minus liquid goes to Mg liquid plus Pr2 gas. Okay, so that's the overall um, cell reaction, okay? And it didn't say what happens at each electrode. So, um, reduction at the cathode and oxidation at the end. Okay? Any questions on this one? Okay, good. Question? So now bromine is a gas. Yes, because it's so hot in that molten mixture that bromine is not in its liquid state anymore. Okay? okay. So it's a good question, okay? I understand that normally it's a liquid in its standard state. Okay. okay. Any other questions?